Hi everyone, my name is Michael O'Connor and I'm a PhD student at the University of Aberdeen. My talk today is on phylogenetic conservatism of ecological and competitive traits and how this translates to patterns of community assembly in damselflies. So, we're all aware that climate change has numerous negative impacts on global biodiversity and species population dynamics, and one such response to climate change is that of rain shifting. Rain shifting is essentially global warming driven species movement, be that because warming has rendered historic habitats unsuitable or has opened up new habitat possibilities beyond what was once a co-limited range margin, resulting in species distributing to higher latitudes and altitudes. This in turn brings rain shifters into contact with local species, creating novel species interactions, the outcomes of which could be detrimental for biodiversity. So, to understand this process of novel interactions, we really need to understand the original process of community assembly in the first place. Understanding what drives and facilitates coexistence between current species will allow us to better understand the potential impacts of these newly arriving rain shifters. Classic theories regarding community assembly rely on ideas such as competitive relatedness and competitive exclusion, whereby closely related species, and by extension, any species who have very similar ecological requirements, should not be able to coexist, as their shared ecological requirements would force them into competition for resources, and therefore compete until one species goes locally extinct. However, we know that dams flies can and do exist in large multi-species communities of ecologically similar and often very closely related species. This occurs due to the apparent widespread phenomenon of ecological conservatism within Psygoptera. So this is a nice visual I like to give of dams fly conservatism. For a typical UK dams fly habitat, you can see that the species that live and coexist together here are incredibly similar. And this extends beyond mere morphology as well. They use the same plants as perches and shelter, the same emergent vegetation to oviposit in, and the same insects and invertebrates as food sources. And this isn't just limited to the adults. The aquatic larvae appear to show the same high degree of ecological conservatism. So the question remains of how these species can coexist despite ecological conservatism flying in the face of classic community assembly theory. Well, one emerging idea is that of competitive conservatism, where not only ecological requirements, but also competitive ability is conserved across the phylogeny. If this is indeed the case, then the similarity in competitive ability between species will be balanced, effectively preventing any one species from outcompeting the other, facilitating coexistence. Viewed in terms of Chesson's theories of coexistence, this places emphasis on equalising forces rather than stabilising, with coexistence being a result of similar fitness levels between species. So this project set to, out to investigate the exact degree of conservatism of both ecological requirements and competitive ability within the damselfly superfamily Xenogrenoidae to see if equalising forces are indeed prevalent in facilitating down to fly coexistence, thereby impacting the outcomes of the processes of both community assembly and rate shifting. For this, I decided to use measures of both phylogenetic signal and wider phylogenetic conservatism. I measured phylogenetic signal using Pagel's lambda, which returns a value between 0 and 1, with 1 representing a greater similarity in trait values between closely related species rather than distantly related ones, and 0 representing no signal whatsoever. As you can see here, a lot of traits relating to both niche use and competitive ability have high lambda values, indicating similarity between related species. Notably, while the phylogenetic signal of niche traits seems quite variable and trait dependent, signal is strong across all competitive traits. Next, using the alpha parameter of the ornstein ullenbeck model, I measured the strength of selection towards an optimum value for each trait across the phylogeny, essentially giving a measure of the degree of overall conservatism for each trait. In short, the greater the alpha value, the greater the degree of similarity in trait value across all species. Values greater than 1 indicate strong conservatism in that trait. And as you can see here, the pattern of these results is startlingly obvious. Niche traits, those related to ecological requirements, are massively conserved across the phylogeny, with precipitation and temperature tolerances showing remarkable similarity between even distantly related species. In stark contrast, competitive traits display negligibly low alpha values, and paired with the lambda values from before, this implies that competitive ability is similar between close relatives, but not something seen widely conserved across the phylogeny. So to bring this all back to the original question of community assembly and range shifting, these results seem to support the presence of equalizing forces rather than stabilizing ones in deciding down to fly community assembly. The strong conservatism of niche traits implies that novel interactions between even distantly related species will result in competition, as even distant relatives share ecological requirements. Meanwhile, the high phylogenetic signal of competitive traits suggests that phylogenetic relatedness will play an important role in deciding whether competitors can coexist or not. The ramifications of this for biodiversity have the potential to be quite damaging, as it could lead to more distantly related local species being outcompeted by rain shifters, resulting in species loss and eventual phylogenetic underdispersion of species within a community.